Hey there, Metagross Freak here, and today I'm looking again at the runes reforged trees to determine what I think are probably the worst runes, or at least the most situational runes. Um, so I, as you can see, I have a tab open, one for each rune page, and I'm just going to state what I think um, the, I guess, the weakest runes in each page are, and why I think they're weaker compared to their other options. Um, so I'm going to start off with the precision page, since that's one that's on the far left of the five pages. So, for example, I'm going to give the example of of how this will work. For example, overheal. I would, if I chose overheal as the worst rune, uh, as one of the worst runes in the page, I would state, "Oh, overheal does this." But, compared to the other runes in its row, this is why it's not as good. Overheal, however, is actually a really good rune, uh, because basically as long as you have a support nearby you, or as long as you have some method of healing you, overheal can be pretty useful. Um, that's, that's, that, that's, just a, it's, that's just an example. I actually really like overheal. So the first two from the, these are from the precision tree, are Legend Alacrity, and last stand. Legend Alacrity for each unique kill, um, and, and it's kind of weird. It, it it uses the the legend, uh, it uses the legend uh, stacking method, which tenacity and bloodline also have. Basically, every time you get a champion takedown, you get I think it's a full legend stack. Epic monster takedowns give you a legend stack, and then large monsters and like eight minion kills give you like half a it's like you need like eight minion kills for one stack and then like two or three large monster kills for one stack bloodline is good because it can give you life steal and tenacity is good because it can give you obviously tenacity um the reason i say alacrity isn't as good is because it's so easy to get attack speed i mean Literally, if you want attack speed, you can just get press the attack, which allows you to go above attack speed. Actually, I think it's, oh, it's lethal tempo. Lethal tempo allows you to get 80%, a 30 to 80% attack speed. And press the attack gives you bonus damage on your basic attacks. So just these two abilities alone are really good with attack speed. So you'd think that alacrity would be good. But the thing is, is there's so many items that give attack speed that really, this just seems like it's kind of, I don't know, it's it's not as good, in my opinion. I mean, if you're going to get lethal tempo anyway, with, say, like, a Runin's Hurricane, I guess Alacrity could be good, but the thing is, there are better ways of getting attack speed, and really, when you could have Tenacity or Lifesteal, I mean, here's the thing, if I'm an ADC, I'd rather have, I'd rather buy an attack speed item, and then gain life steal as I go, then have to gain attack speed as I go and buy life steal. It just I, if I'm playing an ADC, I'm gonna itemize for attack speed, because that's how ADC goes. Um, the other item I'm picking here is Last Stand. All three of these skills are pretty decent, but I think Last Stand is pretty weak in comparison. Cut down is really nice because as long as you have less HP than your opponent, you're dealing more damage. Um, this is phenomenal if you're, especially if you're playing with supports um, or ADCs. Uh, Coup de Gras deals more damage to champions who have less health. This is really good if, if for team fights or if you're in bot lane. And then we have Last Stand. Last Stand in Crete gives you bonus damage if you have low health. And to me, I just, I think this is not necessarily redundant, but it's better to deal more damage to enemies that are at low health than to deal more damage yourself when you're at low health. Coup de Gras will, uh, will affect you regardless of whether you have high or low health. Meanwhile, Last Stand is just, it, it requires you to basically be below 60% health for 5% bonus damage, or to have uh, it to be below 30% health if you want the maximum of 12. I just, I don't find this to be a fair trade-off. Like, unless you're constantly at low health, 
which I wouldn't recommend anyway. Last Stand just doesn't seem to be worth it when compared to either Cut Down or Crew de Gras. Next up, I'm going in Domination, and uh, I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but I don't like Dark Harvest. And that's compared to its other abilities. Um, Electrocute is basically Thunderlords, and it's amazing. Predator, I like getting the giant movement speed bonus, because it basically it's the equivalent of channeling for 1.5 seconds in order to gain a Dead Man's Plate bonus, because it just it gives you a massive movement speed bonus, and then attacking deals extra damage but takes away the movement speed bonus. And then we have Dark Harvest. Dark Harvest requires you to kill champions, epic monsters, or large monsters, or, sorry, large, it says large minions, I'm assuming that means either cannon minions or super minions, to gain soul essence, quote-unquote. And this soul essence stacks up to when you get, it stacks up, and then once you have, at minimum, 150 soul essence, it gives you, like, bonuses, or it's like it lasts 20 seconds, to, and the, the soul charge is it gives you like it lasts 20 seconds but that gets bo boosted to 300 seconds after you collect 150 it, it gives you bonus damage but the thing is is there's so many other methods to get bonus damage that I don't feel like soul essence is worth it like unless you're basically stacking you know large lar uh, like large jungle creeps and you know cannon minions and champion kills like a mofo I don't feel like this is really going to be worth it. Plus, every time you use the soul charge bonus damage, you consume your your soul. So you then have to regain souls every single time. I don't like that. Um, I just don't think it's worth it, especially compared to Electrocute, which is pretty dang good. I mean, even Sudden Impact is pretty cool. Sudden Impact is phenomenal, giving you like Magic Pen and Lethality, Basically, whenever you use your dash, leap, blink, or teleport, that's really cool. I don't know. It just I don't think it. I don't think Dark Harvest is going to be worth it. Um, the other option I chose here was Ghost Poro. I think Ghost Poro is kind of cool, but at the same time, I think it's also the most limiting compared to the other two. Zombie Ward is cool. Zombie Ward means your your wards last longer, and if you kill an enemy ward. Now it's one of your wards. Eyeball Collection is really cool because killing uh, champions and enemy wards gives you bonus AP and AD. And then once you have 20 uh, quote unquote eyeballs, you gain even more ability and attack damage. This is really neat, especially because since you get two eyeballs per champion takedown, you only need to get a minimum of 10 kills. Actually, it's not even. It's not even 10 kills, it's 10 takedowns, which means you can even have just 10 assists to gain this bonus. I'm not a fan of Eyeball Collection, but it's far superior. Then we just have Ghost Poro. Ghost Poro requires you to channel in a bush to get just basically some vision, and then if an enemy walks into that bush, they scare away the Ghost Poro. So it's kind of like a Callista, one of Callista's like little spirit walker things but not as good and it's kind of like putting down it, like it gives you vision but there's a lot of ways to get vision other than using wards i mean you have ashes like seeker drone thing you have like i said before callista spirits you have you know zyra seeds you have uh, heimerdinger turrets you have lux ease there's tons of abilities that give vision and i just find that ghost poro is the most limiting Especially because you can only have one Ghost Poro out at once. You can have infinite zombie wards, but only one Ghost Poro. I just don't think it's as good. Uh, next up, I'm going to get a lot of flack for this one, and that's looking at Phase Rush. Uh, phase Rush is kind of like Electrocute, in that hitting a champion with three separate attacks or abilities uh, where it gives you a movement speed bonus. And if you're melee, in addition to the movement speed bonus, you get slow resistance. Uh, the duration, though, is only 3 seconds, with a 15 second cooldown. This is, I don't know, I just don't find it to be as good. If you're using a champion like, say, Kha'Zix or Zed, who can just 
spam abilities to take out enemies, why aren't you using, you know, domination? I mean, I just find Electrocute to be significantly better than this, and Electrocute has more, uh, it just, it has more of that adaptive damage. I don't know why you would choose Phase Rush over Electrocute. That's just my opinion. Because uh, I don't really, I mean, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just not thinking of it right. Like, I'm sure if you use this on a character like Echo, Phase Rush can work, but I don't, I mean, especially considering how good the uh, Arcane Comet and Summon Area are, I just find Phase Rush to be the most disappointing of the three. And the other option I'm choosing for the Sorcery Tree is Absolute Focus. Absolute Focus is kind of similar to, it's kind of a similar vein to Last Stand. Uh, Absolute Focus requires you to be above 70% health to gain an adaptive bonus of either attack damage or ability power. Again, falling below 70% health is really easy, meaning you may have like a ton of power if you're attacking from range. Like, let's say you're playing a character like, you know, Zareth. If you're sniping people from max range, that's phenomenal. But the moment you go below 70% health, you lose this bonus. Meanwhile, Transcendence gives you free cooldown reduction and turns your excess cooldown into more ability power or attack damage. That alone, I think, is a better ability. And Celerity, while it has its limits, is kind of cool too. I mean, Celerity basically turns and give, not only gives you the bonus movement speed, which is great for, like I've said in a previous video, champions like Yasuo, Janna, and Hecarim, but any bonus movement speed, regardless of whether it's from like a boots item, or say from like Lich Bane or some other item, or you know from like Phase Rush, <laughs> gives you adaptive damage. Uh, the, the point being is Celerity can synergize with things. Absolute Focus just requires you to have high health in order to deal more damage, and I don't know, I find that to be really situational. Next up we're looking at Resolve, and as much as I love Resolve, I have given flack to both of these abilities that I'm looking at. Um, I'm going to do Mirror Shell first, because Mirror Shell I find to only really be good on, like, on characters like Galio, who have ma magic resist scaling. Nine times out of ten, in the early game, having five armor is going to be worth more than having five magic resist. Their abilities are basically the same, but considering how prevalent AD champions are, and considering how most AP champions tend to either be mages, which of course you need magic resist for, or tanks and supports, which don't really deal as much damage anyway, Mirror Shell just seems a lot less useful compared to Iron Skin. And if you really want magic resist, just get Conditioning, which is arguably better, plus it gives you armor. And last I'm looking at, for this tree I'm looking at Demolish. Demolish is kind of cool, I actually do use it on one of my trees because it blends with a build I have, but Font of Life is just amazing, and Unflinching is kind of cool because it gives you a huge chunk of tenacity. Meanwhile, Demolish gives you bonus damage on turrets, but only once every 45 seconds. And trust me, when you're trying to take down a turret, you're basically only going to get this either every now and then for some chip damage, or if you have a team with you, you're you know you're just going to have one person dealing more damage to the turret. I guess if you're, you know, stacking it with something like Aftershock to just do a ton of damage all at once, you know, in, in a single little area, I guess Demolish could work, but I just find Demolish to be the least useful of these three. And last but not least, we're taking a look at the Inspiration Tree. That's right, I have one thing from all four rows. I've mentioned in the previous two videos that I just don't find the Inspiration Tree to be as good. And that's just because some, most of these are all really situational. Uh, personally, while I'm not a big fan of the Unsealed Spellbook, the ability to switch out your summoner spells is pretty useful. As is Kleptomancy, because the bonus gold is just great, and 
getting random consumables, while random can't, is useful too, because you can sell them. Meanwhile, the Glacial Augment only gives you a little bit of a slow, which is kind of like having a, uh, what's it called, an Iceborne Gauntlet? Kind of. Um, though, honestly, I don't find it to be as useful. It, it does proc, by the way, with uh, Frost Queen Claims bol uh, Bolts, as well as the uh, Hextech Frost Laser Beam, whatever it's called. Uh, but I just find it to be fairly situational, considering it'll only really work with those three items. Though actually, it does it it does work a uh, it does work with uh, Randuin's Omen too. But still, four items, Archie. It replicates one item and works with three others. It's that mean that means it's just not as useful. Um, and I'm gonna get flack again for this, but I picked perfect timing. Mostly because having more flashes is good, having biscuits is good, and I have tested this one out. But perfect timing, again, it only it, it has very limited uses. If you're planning on getting a Zonia's Hourglass, Guardian Angel, or Gargoyle Stone Plate, this is pretty cool. But at the same time, the stopwatch is basically equivalent to in the in-game counterpart, which costs 600 gold. It's not really that expensive, and if you were already planning on getting a Zonia's Gar GA or Gargoyle Stoneplate, why not just buy that item anyway? Or for that matter, if Perfect Timing gives you a stopwatch, why would you need to buy one in game anyway? It just it seems kind of weird because it, it gives you an early game item, but you you may not even know for sure until late game that you might not need one. For example. Gargoyle Stone Plate is often the like fifth or sixth item I build on one of my tanks. I might not know until late game that I'm actually going to build one of those. Plus, it takes up an item slot that I might not be able to use until later. Same thing with Zonias. Zonias, I, I build as like a third or fourth item, but I might not need it until I get to that point. Same or Guardian Angel. Guardian Angel I frequently see as like a fifth or sixth item on an ADC or occasionally, like a bruiser brawler. You know, instead, this basically, you're sacrificing an item slot in order to save 600 gold. And really, is getting is saving 600 gold really that worth it? Next up, I'm looking at the Minion de de Dematerializer. This one will give you specifically bonus damage against a minion type. Now, of course, we have melee minions, uh, ranged minions, cannon minions, and super minions. As you kill a minion, uh, actually, uh, you have to wait 155 seconds in order to use it, but you kill uh, six minions, and that gives you plus four damage against that specific type of minion. And uh, I don't know, I just find it kind of disappointing. Because why would you want specifically damage against minions when you could have either free boots, which I realize free boots, the, the magical footwear, are actually only worth about, I don't know, about 400, which means they're actually even cheaper than the stopwatch. But at least they are not only a little bit better than regular boots of speed, but also give you a discount on your upgrades. So overall, I think it's more than worth it. Meanwhile, Futures Market, while I'm not a fan of the ability, at least lets you go into debt and kind of gives you, that means, a little bit more flexibility with buying things. Minion Dematerializer, meanwhile, just makes it so you can deal more damage to minions. This is good early game, but come late game, I mean, most minions are going to get one shot anyway, unless they're a super minion. And last but not least, I'm taking a look at Celestial Body. Here's the thing. Approach Velocity is pretty cool. Cosmic Insight is pretty cool. Celestial Body only offers 100 health, but for the first 10 minutes of the game, you deal 10% less damage. If you're putting this on a tank or a support, you're already going to be dealing less damage. Why would you want your damage neutered? And to be fair, that's probably the only characters you'd put that on anyway, because 100 health, unless you're putting it in like your ADC, which I don't get why you would, it's not going to be as useful. 
yeah, having 100 health is good, but if you're taking 10% less, if you're dealing 10% less damage, is it really that worth it? I don't know. If it was maybe 200 or maybe 150 health, I could maybe see Celestial Body be worth using. But until they buff Celestial Body, it's just not as good when compared to the other two options. So those are my thoughts on what the least useful runes for each tree are. Um, you are, of course, welcome to disagree with me. I'm sure most of you will. I'm actually kind of curious to hear what you have to say on what are the worst or least most situational runes on each page. So let me know in the comments below which ones you think aren't are least <laughs> are the least useful. I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Until next time, I'm Metagross Freak, and remember to think before you type. <laughs>